Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna continue our note run on Aberration. So this is part three. Check out part one and two if you haven't already. And enough said, let's get into it. So in this video, we're gonna cover the notes located roughly here on the map. Uh, and we're starting this journey right here. Uh, I'm going to start on top of this silver structure, or metal structure, which, if I go from a bit of a distance, it looks like this. Um, the portal room is right there. Once you exit the portal room, you get to this lake. Um, and you see this structure going around the train track, just on the other side where it's broken there. Um, we've spent time here in previous episodes as well, but... Uh, so you should be familiar if you watch the two last episodes. But anyways, I'm starting on top of this structure, mainly to make it a little easier to show. However, you don't need to start here yourself. You can. This is more to just get you an, a decent uh, idea of the layout of the area and where the note is. Where the notes are. But the first note um, is very close to this place. Uh, so once you stand on top of here, or if you, um, you can probably see it uh, down from the lake. Like if I go down uh, here, you can still see it. It's just not as visible, but that shelf that goes around here. So you can see that we're kind of surrounded by two levels. You have this level uh, right here, and then you have this upper level with all of these kind of mushroom trees with the big mushroom canopy. And you want to go up on that shelf. You can go up on that shelf right there with all of those mushroom trees. Uh, you can see that there is this little spike right here that has a bunch of crystals on the tip. And land here just so you can kind of get an idea of where what the surrounding area looks like. This can be a good marker. If you find this, uh, you just walk straight in from that. If you just walk straight in on this platform, uh, you see all of these trees, and among them, you see a charge node. And that charge node is going to be very useful to find the note. Because from the charge node right here, if you just look to one of the sides, I think that is, uh, yeah, that's northeast from that, you can see that there's a rock right there. Um, you can see there's uh, rocks all over the place, but um, if you look northeast in this direction right here um, you can see that there is a note on the bottom of this rock it is Diana log number one and it is at 47.5 by 31.9 uh, just to give you maybe a little better of idea of exactly where this is you can see what the area looks like so you have the the uh, um, what would that be? The portal room right there, and charge node right here, and then you have the Diana node right there, so. And then for our next note, we will start at the train track again, right here. We did this in the last episode too, but we're gonna go even further, but this was the most recognizable spot to start. That's why we're doing it. But start where they're broken. Um, not on the portal side, but on the kind of cave side. And this time, you just want to follow the track. So you can go underneath it, or on the side of it, but just follow the track until you get past the first eight support beams like that. And then you get to these. Uh, this is the third pair, or third two pairs, I suppose. We found some notes here last time. But you can see that there is a narrow walkway underneath them. Um, so you want to go past just quickly. These are the cords of this area. Uh, go past these. And you can see that there is a game trail. You can see that the ground is kind of darker right here. Uh, if I fly up, you might see it a little better. A very clear kind of game trail going on. So you want to follow that game trail. So you want to follow this path that just goes down here. Uh, there's a vine going across. Actually, there's two vines going across. 
Uh, and once you get down here, if you just continue, you should eventually come to kind of a fork section where the game trail splits into the left and the right. And right underneath that vine right there, if you look right, you should see a backpack. You should see a backpack right next to that little rock, which is right next to that cliff, which is basically straight right underneath one of these vines right here. Here it is. It is uh, journal Amelia number one at 46.1 by 35.2. So, if you walk back to the fork section that we were literally just at, you can see the note there. You can see that train track kind of thing going back there. This time, however, instead of turning right to that note, go the other way, left, continue down the game trail until you get to those big trees. See, there's a bunch of trees here. So continue uh, until you kind of get around here so you see the trees right there but you don't need to go straight to them however if you look to your left you should see three trees that are kind of standing alone a little bit further away from the rest and you want to go to those specifically the one that's furthest to the right you can also see behind that that there is this big kind of tech structure thing going on so it's a pretty distinctive area uh, if you want the basic coordinates of where we are then here they are. But anyway, go behind the tree. That's the furthest to your right, so this one. Um, and look towards the cave there. So if I just turn the RG away. Uh, look towards that cave. So you should see some mushrooms. You have a few mushrooms here on the left. Another few mushrooms here on your right. In between those mushrooms, you have a rock right there. Um, so that is southeast basically so again you have your big trees behind you raw mushrooms on the right mushrooms on the left rock in the middle and you have grad journal rusty number five at 45.4 by 38 so starting at this note uh it's pretty easy and to find the next one it's very close, but we do need to do a little bit of rock climbing. But from that note, facing this uh, big open space, the mushrooms right here on your left, if you're facing that, go around those, go around those mushrooms, and walk towards the cliff to kind of towards all of that stuff. And when you're on the cliff, if you look down, you can see that there are a couple of big mushrooms kind of on the cliff side. Um, they're over there as well, but focus on the ones on the cliff that you're just standing above. So you have one that's pretty close on your right, and you have one that's a bit further down. Should be pretty straightforward. And that's the one you want to go to. So go towards that one. You don't need to go or use that as a marker. If you're coming on foot, you might not come from the top, but use this one as a marker. I'm gonna land on top, so these are the rough coordinates of the area. This is what the surroundings look like. And if you look down, you can also see that there's a waterfall right there. That's another pretty significant feature you can use. However, from this mushroom, if you look along the cliff, if you look along the cliff and you uh, look down, um, so that would be if you're facing kind of north, east, or east. So if I bring up the map, so if you're kind of facing that way, you look along the cliff. So we came from up there, look along the cliff, waterfall is just behind there. And if you then look down, you should see that there's a couple of glowy plants right down below us on that little shelf right there. So if we go down to those glowy plants, you can see that those are the only two plants that seems to be growing up here, or glowing up here. The waterfall is right there. And if I fly away, just to give you an aerial view, this shelf doesn't seem to be connected by anything. So it's kind of this shelf right here below that cliff. There's a waterfall right there. And uh, in between those two glowy plants, in between these glowy plants, if I get close, you can see we have Grad Journal Sky 
number 1 at 45.4 by 40.4. And then from this place, from this shelf, or more specifically, if you go to this waterfall, if you go and start at the waterfall, that's very close. So we were just there, now we're here at the waterfall. So here's the rough chords to start at. Should be a pretty distinctive feature in the landscape. Uh, if you just follow the river in a little bit, you can see that a beach is kind of forming on your left, and then soon after, a beach is forming on your right, if you have the waterfall behind you. You want to go on this right one. So, waterfall is there, follow the river in, and we go right. And then here, you just walk up this path, simple as that. You should have a pretty big rock on your right, right there. And if you kind of walk up a little bit until it sort of turns around behind that big rock, we have a Mayan note just kind of sitting here, hiding amongst the similar colored rocks. Mayan note number 11 at 48.0 by 38.5. So from this note that we were just at, Right there, uh, go back to the river, go back to the river, but, uh, and continue following the river a little bit, so the waterfall is there, our note is there, the river only goes one way, so continue following the river just a little bit, and you should see this vine that goes uh, uh, above you right here. This vine, you want to go to the high point of that, so however way you want to get up on this place, if you climb or if you use, you know, a thyla or a flyer like I do, it doesn't matter. Point is, you want to get to the high point of that vine. So not the platform on your kind of right over there, but on this one, the high point. And if you look in on the platform, continue kind of walking along, you see that there's this text structure right here. And the text structure has this very pointy end, like that which points to this big rock with a bunch of glowy spots on it. And on the side of that rock, uh, pointing in the same direction as the vine we just came from, we have Rockwell, right next to all of that blue splashy stuff. Rockwell number 11 at 50.7 by 39.9. And then the next note from this structure, so the note, uh, Rockwell note, is just behind there, right there. But we can stay in the area, use this as your general marker. So instead of moving with this sharp end, move against it. So move past the structure right here, just follow the structure along, and you get to this cliff, or like this little dead end. But you want to kind of climb up here. Just continue straight, and you'll see you get to this other section of the K or other platform. So, metal thing is down there. You just climb up this little bit, and you're up on a new place with these pretty cool trees. Uh, and you can also see there's kind of a cliff on your left. So, you just follow that cliff leftwards, and you'll come to some stone kind of pillars or termite. They look kind of like termite mounds, to be honest, but get to the stone pillar. And in between the cliff and the stone pillar, you have a Mayan note. This is Mayan note number 13, 50.4 by 42.4. Starting once again at this metal structure, because it's a good landmark to use. This time, you can kind of go through it like this. Uh, walk towards the cliff that's kind of behind it there. And if you look down, you should see this river that kind of has a very sharp turn, one uh, that leads towards a waterfall. And you want to turn, instead of following to the waterfall, you want to go to the right. There's the waterfall, and you want to go to the right. And if you follow it just a little bit, uh, you'll very soon see that you can either take a right turn or a left turn. The left one leads immediately under this vine, so you want to take that left turn. And if you follow the river just a little bit longer, you can see that 
You now can follow the river to the left, or you can follow on land to the right. Uh, and you want to go on this land section right here, this little beach. However, you don't want to leave up that path. Instead, you want to look among one of these rocks. Come on. One of these rocks. So this little small one, you can see there's a note right there. This is what the area looks like. Oh, for God's sake. There we go. This is what the area looks like. And you want to go to this little rock, and behind it, main note number 12, at 52.9 by 36.4. So, from your main note, we can very quickly find the final note of the day by simply following the river. So, we came from there earlier. Now you want to just continue following the river the other way. You should see this slope forming on your left that kind of starts high and then goes lower and lower. There's also a metal pillar structure behind that again. So just follow the river a little bit until you reach the end of that slope. Uh, when the slope kind of fades out completely. You should have a bunch of lush vegetation at the bottom. Some glowy stuff on your right. And there should be a pathway kind of in the middle of those. So just follow that pathway. Just, uh, these are the rough coordinates of the area. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, continue on this path for a little bit until you have that metal structure on your right. You can see the area starts opening up. And once you get to that open space, you have the metal structure on the right. There's a tiny rock on your left. And if you walk around that rock... You can see that there's a little backpack hiding there with a journal. This is Emilia journal number three at 56.1 by 38.4. So yeah, that was the final note of the day. Uh, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in a week with part four. So stay tuned for that. Goodbye.